AI is not a substitute for common sense. Let's get it. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is your man, Marcus, and I am your digital pastor. So if you remember about six months or so ago, uh, there was a bunch of tech leaders who signed this letter, uh, uh, kind of like a warning saying that we needed to kind of pull back a little bit on uh, the, the AI development and, and we're already going off the rails and this technology hasn't really been around for, uh, for too long yet. So uh, kind of let's just pump the brakes a little bit. And um, I can remember when that story came out, when that letter came out, a lot of us scoffed at it just because, you know, the toothpaste is already out of the tube. And, uh, and, and, and some of these tech leaders who, uh, who were involved in writing this letter, they were already benefiting from the technology. So it was kind of hypocritical for them to, to, to really say that and to really expect that uh, everybody else uh, was uh, kind of going to pause uh, their research and, and, and pause their development. Um, so, you know, it, it, we kind of took it with a grain of salt, to be honest. But uh, I, I do think that uh, there was some validity. Now that I think back, now that I'm thinking about what's going on right now, I do think that there is some validity um, in that letter that was written and the sentiment thereof. <laughs> and so the reason why I say that, it just seems that when AI is involved, that people put their common sense to the side. And th 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 there's no substitute for common sense. And AI does not substitute for common sense. If you get nothing out of uh, the rest of this video, I just want, need you to understand and get it in your mind. AI is not a substitute for common sense. So what am I talking about? So uh, this particular story came out a couple weeks ago, and, and I'm just now talking about it. Um, because it's been on my mind for a couple weeks, but this is the first time I've had an opportunity uh, to really do this video. And so um, th th this video from, uh, I believe it was February 19th. Um, and, and, I, and I'm going to read a little bit of the, the, the summary. And this summary of the article uh, comes from the CISO series. Uh, the CISO series does a daily uh, about six minute podcast uh, of the top news stories uh, every single morning. And that is what uh, Dr. Gerald Oger, that's where he, where he pulls his news from when he gives his uh, hour long daily cyber threat brief uh, every Monday through Friday uh, on YouTube, uh, eight, eight o'clock Eastern. But um, but yeah, so I just want to read a little bit of this. Uh, it, it says Air Canada must honor refund invented by its chatbot, says court. This case deals with a passenger who booked a flight last year to attend the funeral of his grandmother. He asked the airline's chatbot for its bereavement policy, which allows a discount for such quickly booked flights. The bot provided information that did not agree with the airline's main bereavement policy page. When Air Canada refused to honor what the bot had promised, the passenger took his case to small claims tribunal. Air Canada's defense was that it should not be liable for the chatbot's misleading information because it's a separate, it's a quote, separate legal entity that is responsible for its own actions, unquote. The tribunal disagreed, <laughs> and I disagree as well. <laughs> uh, the Air Canada later stated that the AI powered bot was intended chiefly to assist during periods of peak demand, helping customers confirm their flights. Experts told the Vancouver Sun newspaper that Air Canada may have succeeded in avoiding liability in this case if its chatbot had warned customers that the information that the chatbot provided may not be accurate. And, and we're gonna come back to that last point in just a second. Common sense, right? And the reason why I say it, 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 it is, is common sense, and, and, and I'm not trying to call Air, Air Canada dumb or anything like that, but I, I just want us to think about the fact that, uh, can, can you think of a time where uh, somebody's legal department has not been on this game and, ha and, and, and has made such a crucial error like this to not say, uh, as, as, um, as you see at the end of this, uh, uh, this summary here uh, that Air Canada may have succeeded in avoiding liability if it had uh, simply just stated that uh, the information that the chatbot provided may not be accurate. To, to hear that that's all that they had to do 
uh, and, and, and to avoid liability in this particular case, uh, that, that was just mind-blowing to me. It was mind-blowing because, you know, legal departments are, are, are usually up on this kind of thing. And so, um, and, and, and so really that makes me think, okay, again, this is a, a low-tech solution to a high-tech problem. So what am I saying here? So the low-tech solution uh, to this here is that, okay, if you as a business, if you as a company, especially a, a, a huge corporation, if you have decided that you are going to uh, begin to implement uh, AI into your business, then w w the, the low-tech solution that you need to implement here is that you need to get a, an AI team together. Yeah, you may have your, your, your AI team from, a, from an R&D standpoint or whatever, but no, you need to have an AI uh, committee, an AI team, an AI department uh, in your company that has people from all over. It needs to be interdepartmental, okay? You need to have people on there, uh, not just from security, not just from, from, from IT, uh, but you need to have other people on that team as well. You need to have people from marketing on that team. You need to have people from legal on that team. And, and, and the reason why you need to have uh, a bunch of different departments is because there are considerations uh, that are going to come up and there are blind spots that are going to come up um, in any conversation about AI and the implementation thereof because the technology is still so new. There are going to be things that are going to come up that you're not going to be able to think about. And you need to make sure that you have all your ducks in a row uh, when you come out with this. And you need to make sure that you're not testing in prod, as, um, as a lot of developers would say. Uh, you, you, you're not testing once this thing has already gone into production. Once it's gone into production, uh, again, the toothpaste is out of the tube. There's nothing you're going to be able to do about it. But you need to make sure legal is on top of its game by making sure that they have covered the company from liability. This was a huge miss by the legal department here and something that uh, you, you usually wouldn't uh, expect from, uh, from a company's legal team. And, and I'm sure uh, somebody uh, on that legal team um, really got embarrassed and, and really got chewed out um, company-wide probably in this situation. I can imagine that that's what happened because I know that I would have been upset at my legal department if, if I was the one who was the, the CEO of this company because it just seems like that's just something that you need to that you need to take into consideration. Um, we don't know yet, and, and, and we already know that ChatGPT uh, has been prone to hallucinations, has been prone to saying, um, giving you kind of the wrong information, and and uh, and and, and I, somebody almost got disbarred because of the the, the information, and, and maybe they did get disbarred. I need to look back at that story to see what happened, but. Uh, you know, there was a lawyer. I don't, I don't know if you heard that story. It, it was an attorney who tried to uh, argue a case uh, and tried to bring up um, a, a, a case that ChatGPT made up. <laughs> and I, I just I don't understand how you do that. That's another situation right there. I know that's not what we're talking about, but that's another situation right there where um, where we have to keep in mind the fact that uh, AI is not a substitute for common sense. Why in your right mind? as an attorney who had to pass a bar to be certified to practice in whatever state uh, or whatever country you're, 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 um, you're practicing in, why would you ever uh, depend on uh, chat GPT to give you accurate information? Why would you not vet that? You as an attorney, you have to vet information that you're getting anyway, so why wouldn't you do that now? And so, uh, and, and so that's what we what we have to consider in this particular in this situation with Air Canada, uh, and and, and I'm, I'm I'm hoping and I'm praying that uh, other companies have seen Air Canada's mistake and have gone back into uh, in, 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 into uh, their teams and they have considered the fact that hey yeah we, we need to implement this but we need to make sure we have all ha hands on deck from all different departments to make sure that we are doing um, what we need to do as a company to avoid. Uh, liability because of uh, whatever this new uh, <laughs> whatever uh, this new technology does and so that's all I want to leave you with uh, AI is not a substitute not a substitute for common sense God bless